like Zeke at all, but he said a quote this episode, you don't get the good stuff without working through the bad. And everything about it represented this entire episode. <sighs> Jesus, Amara, Damon, JR, his mom, and Thea. I mean, my God, people. Let me gather my thoughts. Now, before I get started with this episode recap, I have to talk about how I thought this was going to be the season finale, being that shows usually run eight to 10 episodes as a new series drop. So I was shocked to realize it was really 13 episodes. But I am also excited because that means they have no excuse to not get into everything like I need them to, and they bet not miss a beat. But enough about that and jumping straight into the episode breakdown, let me start with Amara because whew, it took a minute, but I think she's ready for a fight. So we now know that Amara's old friend slash schoolmate Jada's sister Veronica is the one who released that mug shot of her. And I was ready for Amara to confront the lady and put her in her place, but she didn't, which had me upset because everyone around is ready to go to war, expecting Amara to have that same energy. But she likes to act like she's unbothered. Like Amara, please cut it out. So being that she didn't want to deal with the situation or the lady, she decides that she's going to tell Zeke and let him handle it. Which makes literally no sense to me because he is like the worst person to do anything that involves defending or backing up Amara. So I don't know why she thought this situation would be any different because it wasn't. And when she went to let Zeke know what Veronica been doing, he instantly got defensive and discredited everything Amara was saying, while also caping for the Veronica lady, basically bragging on how big and important she is. But see, the thing is, Veronica got Amara all fired up when she decided to pop up to a class Amara was teaching and they met face to face. Side note, Veronica looks like a real and true mean girl. But anyways, when she went to Amara class, she was on her neck. But baby Tina, Amara's older sister, popped in just in time and was ready to air the whole classroom out by her baby sister. And even though I don't care for Tina, she moved up on my meter in this episode because her level of evil and tick for tech is the perfect match for this Veronica lady. Who, by the way, expressed how she was not stopping her feud with Amara until she was you know, depressed and down bad, just like comparing her to the um, girl Jada, her sister. And something Emmy knew that was her plan all this time, while Amara was thinking she was doing all of this blackmailing just to get her out of the school. But that lady was going to take it as far as she could at Princeton and beyond, which is why I said Amara needs to stand up and fight for herself and put on her grown woman panties. <sighs> but, because of everything that happened, Veronica ended up getting Amara all fired up and Amara discovered that Veronica don't even donate to the school yet she has a seat with the board of trustees, which is odd. And Amara not only found out that Zeke has a hand in her getting that position, but other sketchy things as well. All I know is once Amara is done digging, she's going to let the chopper out. And I love that Zeke may be going down with Veronica because He's been treating Amara so wrong. And overall, he just seems like a pushover president anyways. Even though they all be pushovers. I just feel bad for Keisha because she may get caught in the crossfire. Ooh. And what if her and Simone start beefing over this? Um, geez, so many things can play out. But see, this is why Veronica should have just gone about her business and left, and left Amara alone. Now moving on, I want to get into Thea because my heart really goes out to her, honestly and truly. But I was very upset about her actions this episode, even though she came back and made up for it. Still, I was disappointed. So Thea is still going through her traumatic experience of almost being taken advantage of before Damon stepped in, which makes sense. But then I thought she could just get over it as, you know, the days go by. And in her mind, she was getting through it. But the boy Kevin popped up in this episode trying to talk to her and ask if, you know, they were cool. Like, boy, what the hell is wrong with you? Get away from that girl. Ugh. I wish Damon seen that so he could have beat for the ass. But he wasn't. <laughs> 
Although JR's ex-girlfriend Akila, who he literally hates with a passion, saw the way Thea reacted when the boy walked up to her and knew something was up and decided to talk to Thea. Now, let me give a rundown on Akila because at first I thought she was the character that we was meant to, you know, like dislike, but she's not. Now, with that being said, like I brought up earlier, she is JR's ex-girlfriend. He doesn't care for her at all because she cheated on him. And I mean, JR is literally disgusted with the thought, the sound, and the presence of her. But she still holds her composure and tries to speak to him and just be nice. But I'm like, JR, bro, you cheated on that man. Don't expect him to be all friendly now. Well, come to find out, she was basically raped by the dude Kevin that tried to do the same thing to Thea. And because of it, JR dumped her since there were rumors going around saying she had sex with him when that wasn't the case. And it wasn't, you know, consensual. He literally was friends with her when she was a freshman and one day he decided to, you know, get her drunk and took advantage of her and she woke up naked, like, trying to figure out what's going on. He acted like he was just so, so foolish. I was so sad hearing her break down with, you know, this creep ass dude, but, you know. Now, because of that, and knowing how JR is when he gets into his heated attitude mode, he probably didn't believe her, believe her or just avoided her overall and broke up with her, and that was that. But she didn't take any offense to his reaction, which is why she keeps coming around being nice and friendly, trying to get back on good terms with him. Because she clearly wants JR back, but his hot-headed behind is not budging. Now, Akila has kept this story bottled up for a long time and never told anyone. Just how Thea isn't telling anyone, and neither is Damon, when he was a witness to it. Which is why this damn boy keep getting away with it. But I won't even get started with that because I get why they are keeping it a secret because they feel embarrassed and like no one will believe them or the boy won't get punished how he should. But I do feel like someone has to say something because no telling how many girls his creep ass has been doing this to and will continue to do this to. But like I said, Akila held this in for a long time and decided to let Thea know because she felt like Thea will understand and relate to her being that, you know, she went through the same. She went through something similar with the same guy. But Thea went into a zone and went to snapping on Akila, basically blaming the girl for the boy attacking her. When I say I was so pissed at Thea for her actions, I can't even begin to express how mad I was for what she did. Now, I'm sure Thea reacted the way that she did because she probably feels like Akila should have been said something to someone, then he wouldn't have had the opportunity to try and do the same thing to her. But that's not fair at all. Akila was a victim alone and scared, and the fact that Thea is literally going through the same and not saying anything to anyone as well proves she knows why Akila didn't say anything either. So the audacity of her to make that girl feel bad? And to be honest, Akila had it worse. And no, I'm not trying to compare their experience, but I have to call a spade a spade. Because unlike Thea, Akila didn't have anyone to come to her rescue, and her reputation and relationship was destroyed because of it. So yeah, I was not team Thea at all. But towards the end, Thea got some sense back into her head and apologized to Akila and invited her to speak her truth to the Dean of Students and President, giving them both the courage to do something about the boy. I just hope they actually do something about it because he needs to be expelled and arrested, period. I don't want to hear nothing else about this. But moving along, I want to talk about Damon and JR because like I said in my last recap, you can't talk about one without bringing up the other since their storylines are connected. But baby, whew. what an emotional roller coaster ride these two are enduring, okay? So in this episode, JR's mom, Celine, is on campus to see him, which is odd to me because she didn't show up for him during the, you know, the family weekend knowing he wanted her there and needed her there. But I won't get into all of that and let her use the excuse of dealing with her, you know, her divorce issues. Nonetheless, she's around and JR finally decides to introduce her and Damon to each other and allow Damon to ask her some questions. Now, 
what was weird to me is that JR left and didn't stay to see what was what with this entire situation. But yeah, JR not checked out and doesn't care anymore. Weird, but whatever. So David asked Celine if she knew of his dad, Xavier Wilson. And her face fell on the floor and her whole demeanor just changed. And she told Damon she had to go and didn't even answer his question. So Damon was trying to talk to they um so Damon was trying to talk to JR about what happened and see if he could, you know, talk to his mom himself. But JR decided to get snappy with Damon because he didn't want to ask his mom any questions for Damon and wanted to be done with the situation overall. Now, at first, I was team JR in this situation because he was looking out for his mom. But the moment he let Damon ask his mom some questions was the time he opened back up Pandora's box. But it seems like now that he's got, you know, the answers to his questions and his theories, he doesn't want to help Damon anymore. And I don't like that at all. And it's not fair, especially when he was the star of this entire thing. So now I am team Damon in this fight between the two of them. But baby, the mom finally came around to speaking her truth and opening it up. And she admitted to Damon and JR that she had an affair with Damon's dad back in the day and had a baby and believes Damon to be that baby. When I say I was shocked, shook, confused, and intrigued all at once, like what does this mean? Being that JR and Damon took the DNA test and said, you know, they weren't related. Also, does that mean Damon really isn't adopted, but he has been living with his real dad all this time? <sighs> okay. My mind is literally going bonkers after this spiel, okay? I, I, I just need more. Like, I'm feeding for more, and I cannot wait for next episode. I can honestly say this was one of the best episodes of the show because it was content-filled, for sure. But maybe a little too filled because I do think that a bit much was happening. Like, I could have done without the whole Simone mentor to Minty bit. It was cute and all, but it was just, you know, a bit much to squeeze in when so many other important storylines were happening. I also could have done without Keisha and all her therapy relationship and dad problems. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to see it. And I think they actually could have gotten into it deeper and not made it seem so rushed and sporadic trying to squeeze it in this episode when it wasn't, you know, really needed. And, you know, it was kind of hard to di digest everything that was going on with Keisha. But beyond all of that, this was a good episode. <laughs> well, that's all I have to say. And I hope you all enjoyed my recap. And if you have thoughts, you already know what to do. Like this video and show your girl some love. Come your thoughts and let's discuss what you thought of this episode and where you think things are heading. And last but certainly not least, subscribe and join the Queen of Baby. Bye.